ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to being trapped for 10,000 years and now deciding it's time to conquer Earth. If you get that reference, you're officially both old and also part of the Cool Kids Club. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mac to the Kari, and I'm going to stop imitating every modern vlogger before I lose what's left of my sanity. Not that I had sanity in the first place. <laughs> anyway... What with Outriders, soon to have its public demo, I thought what better time than to make a video that can benefit every single person looking into venture into this genre-defining game. And what video is that, you may ask? Well, classes, my boy! We're going to take a look at the four different classes and a general overview of what to expect from them in terms of playstyle, abilities, and specs. So when the game does launch, you'll have a more educated understanding of what you want to play first. So just to start with some generalizations of each class, each class in Outriders has eight primary skills by default, all seeking to complement that class's specialization of what they focus on. Each class then can have three of these skills active at any given time, and can swap between them in hubs or mid-mission as long as you're not in combat. This allows for customization for team setup and on-the-fly adaptation to your situation. Now, uh, eight skills is quite a nice range of abilities already, but this is where the future videos that we make will go into a bit more detail, as these skills then change dramatically based on the spec you build for. Each class then having three separate sub-specs you can put points into to diversify playstyle and ability performance. You then also alter your abilities through the perks of the armor you're wearing, and then you complement that based on the element types and synergy with your teammates. So, you can see there's a lot of personalization to your power fantasy here, and going into every ounce of detail now would be a little bit unnecessary. For the sake of simplicity, I just want to give you guys a general overview as to how each class plays, so you can kind of pick up how you're going to pick up each spec when you jump into Outriders. I'm also going to link below a handy graph for those who want a bit more of an in-depth look at the stats and analytics, as well as a general layout for each of the classes. Uh, when we come to make our detailed guides for each class, we will be using these metrics, but for the sake of general overview, we're going to keep this video as simple as possible and as easy to understand as possible for anyone coming into Outriders for the first time. Starting this video off with the Devastator, this class is defined by being your go-to brawler and overall tanky melee type class. A class designed to take some punches and dish out some tremendous close quarters damage at the same time. It's worth noting that each class also heals in different ways, as well as gaining certain perks and class passives that define how they heal, what their melee does, and how they buff their team. For the Devastator in this example, he heals by killing enemies within his melee range. Additionally, keep in mind that all players will heal based on their leech they've built for and general activity within an engagement. The Devastator's melee's special is that when you hit an enemy in melee damage, it will inflict bleed damage for 9 seconds. And then additionally, he gains an additional 16% of his maximum health and also increases armor by 30%. The Devastator's abilities are then the following. First of all, looking at Earthquake, a frontal cone shockwave dealing light to moderate damage, but acts as an interrupt knocking enemies down and generally slowing the advance of your foes. Golem is a self-cast buff to reduce incoming damage. By default, a very basic buff, but through spec trees and alterations can be used to not only taunt, but also act as the crux of the Devastator's tanking mantra. Gravity Leap, a very hero landing type ability where you leap through the air and land a la Deadpool style in front of your foes. From that point of impact, enemies will be sent flying through the air, thus interrupting and knocking them out of formation. Use this to focus down enemies that are in cover or larger enemies to take them out of a fight for a good few seconds. Damage from this is not considerable, but can be nice to be complemented by your other abilities. Reflect Bullets, helping to advocate for that notion of protecting and supporting your allies. Reflect Bullets does, well, kind of what it says on the tin. Think Neo from the Matrix. The Devastator will raise his hands and stop any bullets traveling at him or allies within X distance, and upon command, send them flying back at enemies, that is the bullets, dealing moderate damage. This can then be specialized into to synergize with element damage and such like through modding and your spec tree to inflict even more damage. Impale. Most of the Devastator's abilities are pretty transparent with what they do, and no surprise, Impale impales. X amount of targets, completely removing them, removing them from play as a hard form of crowd control. Additionally, this synergizes with all your other abilities in some form or another, as when an enemy is low health, you can perform a finisher to deal lethal damage. This will CC an enemy for 9 seconds by default, but can last longer or deal more damage or even affect more enemies with status procs based on your spec and modding. Tremor. 
creates a series of explosions around the Devastator, dealing a small amount of base damage, but also then drains health from effective enemy affected enemies. This acting as a time to heal type ability, encouraging the idea that you want to always be in the thick of a fight, thus having more enemies to drain health from, thus getting more healing. Boulder Dash, otherwise known as a Britishism, Boulder Dash charges forward and deals a huge amount of damage to a targeted enemy. And at the end of the charge, the Devastator will smash down, dealing even more damage to the enemies that are caught in a small blast radius. This should be used to enter a fight, to help the mantra of always being in combat and being the tanky boy that you are, to get straight into the thick of the enemy lines. Endless Mass, other than being a euphemism for my ex-wife, is a fantastic ability for Team Synergy. This will act kind of like a black hole. Uh, I mean, it might as well be a black hole, honestly. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is a black hole. It sucks in enemies from quite a large distance away, clumping them up, setting you up or your allies up for nice amounts of large AoE damage. So whether it's your abilities that you use when enemies are clumped up or your allies, see this as kind of like a small amount of damage, but more so for setting up big, big finish type abilities. As I mentioned prior, each class has three subspec trees. And for the sake of making this video a reasonable time, I'm not going to go into each individual node in these spec trees. But instead, I, we will generalize these spec trees so you get a basic idea of what each one will benefit your class for. But this is where your personalization comes in. And the great thing is you're not stuck to just one. You can kind of dip between each of the spec trees so you can get a feel for each one or maybe synergize between two, two of them as much as you so like. The spec trees within Outriders are very, very versatile to your preference. The Devastator's first spec tree is the Vanquisher. The Vanquisher's spec tree will focus you down your melee and close quarters path, benefiting a lot to your shotguns, health regeneration, physical damage, and end traits that will then benefit you to debuffing your enemies, making them weaker to you and your allies. Warden is the defined tank path. Just straight up tank, nothing much more to it. It really is everything a tank would ever need. Everything in this path will aid in health regeneration, your overall health, buffing allies, and increasing resistances to melee and range damage alike. And later down the line, even getting cheat death mechanics. And the final spec in this tree is the Seismic Shifter. This is a spec that will focus much more on the idea of spamming and casting your abilities. Still with a focus on support and tankiness, mind you, this is a tree you will go for if you want to be a bit more reserved with your playstyle and maybe dish out a bit more damage as opposed to taking it. It's a supportive role and it's one that definitely focuses on team play as opposed to the aforementioned specs, which are very much focused around solo play or the idea of using your own abilities to themselves. This spec tree then focuses on spamming abilities with prolonged status effects and such like. Moving right along to the Pyromancer, one guess what this guy focuses on. That's right, a bright personality. I, I, I'm joking, it's fire. He's a fire boy. The Pyromancer is very much centered around medium range combat, flinging huge waves of fire whilst also empowering weapons and allies with fire damage as well. The Pyromancer class traits are the following. For healing, whenever an enemy is struck by an ability, that enemy is marked. When a marked enemy dies, the Pyromancer will regenerate his health. Additionally, the Pyromancer will inflict fire damage to any enemy he melees, also empowering your team with a bonus 5% life leech. As for the Pyromancer's abilities, they are the following. Starting with Heat Wave, this sends out a wave of heat, duh. And the simplest way to look at this is, well, a simple small interrupt and an in initial impact of heat damage and then a small period of time where the enemies affected by this wave are then going to take fire damage over that duration. Simple, fast casting and effective for acting as a primer for your other damages. Feed the flames! Using this ability will cause one enemy to have a very, very bad time. The Pyromancer will pull an enemy from up to 15 meters away and drain them of their health, dealing considerable damage over that period and also then inflicting Ash. And for the sake of simplicity, we'll just say that Ash is quite a useful status effect. I'll, I'll make another video in the near future going into detail about the different status effects, but just to make sure this video isn't a million hours long, we kind of want to simplify things here. Thermal Bomb will inflict burn onto an enemy and thus turn them into a living bomb. If the enemy dies whilst afflicted, they explode in a large radius, inflicting large amounts of fire damage to those caught in said explosion. This is one you use on a bunch of squishier enemies or one very large enemy that's been brought low. Either way, this is this is a fun one to thin out the herds and will opt be optimized by synergizing with your allies and your other abilities and gets even fancier through your spec tree. Overheat deals a small amount of damage initially to everyone in a ring around you and knocks them all back. 
This is essentially your oh crap, I'm in trouble ability. This gives you and your allies breathing room. Additionally, it also sets the enemies on fire, which is always good, right? Y your enemies should always be on fire when you're a pyromancer. Just saying. Volcanic Round is as much of a self buff as it comes. This converts the entire magazine of your current gun to turn all the ammo into Volcanic Rounds, dealing heightened damage and inflicting fire damage. Keep in mind you want to make sure you use this on a full magazine. Nothing worse than thinking you're about to blow your load and all you get is a trickle of fiery annoyance rather than torrent of molten death. Either way, this empowers your bullets to deal more damage and set enemies on fire. Ash Blast. This is probably one of the Pyromancer's pivotal abilities. Ash Blast sends an arc of ash damage causing all enemies caught by the wave to be frozen in place. Although that is more so caused by the status, but hey ho, who's, who's counting? This is to set enemies up for finishers and to act as a nice form of crowd control. This can be used offensively and defensively quite notably. Phaser Beam. Other than sounding like something from a 90s comic book, this deals an energy beam that gains bonus damage based on your status power. So you'll be finding this to be far more beneficial if you're specking and modding around it specifically. But in essence, this is your I'm a firing my laser type ability. This inflicts a huge amount of damage to enemies in the general vicinity and enemies directly struck by the laser are then interrupted. I'd say this is something you want to use on cooldown at any given time because damage and interrupts are always good. Eruption is our final ability and is all about huge amounts of fire damage and resonates the mantra of being a pyromancer, causing an eruption around a selected enemy, dealing huge amounts of burn damage to that initial target and all enemies within the radius, and will act as a good primer for your passive and to generally just melt away everything around you. Think Ember from Warframe with World on Fire. Moving on to the Pyromancer Spectre, starting with Ruler of Ashes, which focuses quite heavily around a close quarter brawler type, Play, complementing your mid to close range abilities and weapons with bonus leech, penetration and axe as a general good all round spec to go to if you want something that's quite simplistic to get your brain around rather than something that might be seem a little bit confusing. Scorcher focuses on the fire and acts as your caster spec, ex exacerbating fire damage and duration whilst complementing your status power. Remember early how I said Phaser Beam required a complementary spec? This is kind of the one you want to focus on if you're planning on dealing lots of fire damage. Tempest is more or less your solo and tank spec, increasing health and resistances, complementing your health regeneration, and interestingly it gives Ash a bit more of a place in the build, as it then complements the duration of your Ash stuns, allows you to fight more enemies with Ash, and basically acts as your a way to get around enemies and to slow enemies down to give yourself more room to play in a solo mantra. The Tecromancer. This was a class I actually got to play during my playtest I was given by the developers, and in my eyes is probably one of the most unique class in the game that you'll get to be able to play. With a lot of technical elements to make up his kit, this is a class I would recommend if you're looking for something that gives you a bit of challenge, but also versatility. The Tecromancer relies on gadgets and ordnance, while centering themselves around a bit of a longer range playstyle, focusing with sniper rifles and such like. This is probably the most diverse of the classes in the game, where it can support, buff, damage, crowd control, and deal huge damage from a distance as well. The only thing it might lack is general tank ability, but the versatility here is what makes the Tecromancer so useful. As far as the Tecromancer's passives goes, its melee strike will deal frost damage on a cooldown, freezing enemies within a small radius. To heal, the Tecromancer resonates Leech, recovering health from every bit of damage you deal, and then additionally grants a long-range weapon damage bonus by 7.5%, also increasing your weapon and skill life leech by 15% each. Now let's talk about the Tecromancer's ability, shall we? Starting with Pain Launcher. Other than sounding like a really edgy goth band, Pain Launcher will spawn a rocket launcher turret that will spew out a barrage of rockets in an expanding frontal cone. The range to this is huge and works extremely well for digging enemies out of cover and just generally laying waste to your foes. It does have a bit of a wind up time, so you've got to make sure you plant this with a bit of premeditation, but otherwise is a general good all rounder for damage and long range bombardment. Blighted Rounds act similarly to the Pyromancer's Volcanic Round, but instead this will fill your remaining magazine with status inducing bullets. This then weakening enemies and making them take damage over time, and that effect spreads to nearby enemies, dealing a portion of the damage dealt to the initial target to the enemies that it spreads to. Cryo Turret. Another simple turret that spews out ice shards and ice clouds with complements of crowd control. 
but also acts as a great way to just generally control the field far better. Tools of Destruction is a very spec oriented ability that depending on your choice will either spawn a Gatling gun with high fire rate or a missile launcher that deals big explosive damage. Both guns will last until the ammo is drained or until you toggle them off. Their damage then influenced by your build and spec you go for. Fixing Wave is the support ability of the game and is as close to a direct heal as you're going to get. The Techromancer puts down a ring and for anyone who stands inside this ring, they will get healed. But it doesn't just stop there because even if your allies aren't close by, if you are stood in the ring, your allies will receive a reflection of that healing even if they're miles away from you. Cold Snap. This is in my eyes one of the Techromancer's most useful abilities. This ability drops a canister on the floor like a grenade, and from its deposit point it will send out a wave of ice, completely freezing enemies in a large area. I use this to great effect for solo play, and to give myself breathing room when I felt like the enemy were pushing just a little bit too hard. Blighted turret is a debuffer, similar to your cryo turret, but this one focuses on weakening enemies and acting as a distraction, as enemies will always prioritize shooting the turret over you or your allies, whilst all the while poisoning enemies to make them take damage over time. As far as your spec goes, the first spec tree you're going to have is Pestilence. Pestilence is going to focus on your weaponry, improving overall weapon damage and efficiency, and making every weapon you fight able to inflict elements or debuff enemies to a certain extent. And it's the all go round, the go round all round spec, wow that was a friggin tongue twister, the go to all round spec for those who want something simplistic in the general state of the game. Tech Shaman then focuses on survival and complementing the overall supportive nature of your abilities and such like, while also giving cheat death mechanics later down the spec tree. And then the demolisher tree is all about your gadgets, focusing on reducing cooldowns, increasing potency, and even including how your elements will influence them later down in the spec tree. This is the one you go to if you want to deal huge amounts of damage. The trickster is the final class we're going to talk about today. This is the roguelike class of the game. The one focusing on being speedy, getting into enemy lines, disrupting and stabbing, and then getting out with an acrobatic abander. As far as passives go, your melee will inflict enemies with slow, which is acts as a fine form of crowd control for those affected. Healing-wise, the trickster gains health from close-range kills, much like the Devastator, but then gets a complementary shield to go with that too, and then benefits from 5% extra health, and while shields are active, grants 5% damage mitigation as well. Now in terms of abilities, the Trickster comes with all the complementary abilities you'd expect from a roguelike type character. Temporal Slice is a rather impressive slice type ability. Any enemies struck by this slice are then affected by slow. And as that may imply by the name alone, slows the enemies whilst also dealing big big damage. Slow Trap, even more slows. This creates a nice big bubble similar to that of Limbo's Cataclysm from Warframe. This lasts for a nice round whole 30 seconds toward an area slowing enemies and projectiles and thus controlling the battlefield for you and your allies. Should an ally get knocked down or maybe there's just too many enemies you need to prevent them from getting close up to your crap. Hunt the Enemy is a super simple maneuverability type skill that teleports you behind a selected enemy and then dealing slow damage to the target. So focusing this on a big enemy is great for selectively deciding which enemy you want to screw over and slow. But you can also use this to teleport yourself and place yourself amongst a group of enemies to then land a temporal slice or plant a slow trap. Twisted Rounds. Oh look, another magazine ability. Everyone except the Devastator has one of these, don't they? That Devastator really got screwed over on the gun department, didn't they? This will increase your damage on your existing magazine by quite a considerable margin in your existing gun, and with the right spec and mods can also then apply debuffs and other such nonsense to your enemy. Round Slice. To complement a close quarters playstyle, this will generate several blades that will spin around the trickster, dealing great damage and encouraging your close quarters focused playstyle. Nothing much to really say about them, they're just blades that deal nice damage to enemies that come within range. Venator's Knife. Throw a knife and then that knife will ricochet between multiple enemies, marking them and slowing each enemy struck tremendously. And additionally, marked enemies will then take double damage, go doing great for debuffing and crowd control. This then opening up a lot of finishes for your allies and also maybe to focus down enemies that might be a little bit tougher. Time Rift shockwaves enemies into the air a little bit like Rhino Stomp, freezing them in place for great crowd control interrupts. Being good as a oh crap type ability to make sure give you a bit of room to maneuver. This is an ability that you can also then utilize with your t uh, hunt and prey ability should you wish. And last but not least for the specs, we're going to look at the trickster spec trees, starting with Master of Space. 
which as cool as the title may sound, is very much focused around your physical damage, increasing armor penetration, melee damage, and baseline race damage ratios. Simple and effective, this is your intro spec to the Trickster if you want something a little less complicated. Heartbringer is a pseudo-tank spec that, although it doesn't give you direct tank ability, encourages a faster playstyle. The faster and more adventurous you are, the more this will turn you from a squishy boy into a tanky boy, while also being able to then debuff most enemies you so much as even look at. Assassin is then the one that focuses on your ability of becoming the better. true master of yeah, time, where enemies that get slowed will be slowed for longer, Speech get additional debuffs, characters? and just in general take far more damage. What? This is when you really do become Limbo from Warframe. But much like the other spec trees, this what power only speech? works when you're actively you. engaging the enemies with your abilities. The Trickster isn't a class you want to play if you want to be reserved and stand back and not really do that much. The Trickster is very much complemented by an active, very flamboyant playstyle. And that's the video, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video has been informative. Hopefully you've learned something a bit about your about what class you're going to be playing when the game is officially launched. And if you decide you want to come and join us for this, we do generally stream every single day. And also there is a Twitter you can follow for daily updates to everything going on in the Top Hatters community as well. If you have comments that you'd like to make about what you think is going to be happening with the classes and the game itself, please use the comments down below to create a helpful, creative debate forum place where we can all converse about everything about Outriders and such like. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see all of you top hatters in the next video. Ta-ra!